Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the new Gen Software Technologies Limited Q4 FI20 conference call hosted by ICSA Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Deepthi Nehra Chok. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I am Deepthi Nehra Chok, Head IR News and Software Technologies Limited, and I welcome you all to the Q4 FY20 results of the company. I hope everyone on the call is keeping safe. Connecting with me remotely today is our management, Mr. Devakar Nigam, Chairman and Managing Director, Nijan. Mr. Varad Rajan, Whole Time Director. Mr. Virendra Jeet, Senior VP Sales and Marketing and Product, and Mr. Arun Kumar Gupta, Chief Financial Officer. Before we move on to the discussion, let me highlight that this call may contain certain forward-looking statements concerning Newgen's future business prospects and profitability, which are subject to a number of risks and uncertainties, and the actual results could materially vary from the forward-looking statements. past performance may not be indicative of future performance the company does not undertake to make any announcements in case any of these forward looking statements become materially incorrect or update any forward looking statements made from time to time by or on behalf of the company for further details you may refer to the investor relations section of our website i would like now hand over to mr nigam for the presentation of the results mr nigam good evening everyone and thank you for joining us at our Q4 FY20 post result conference call i hope everyone on the call and their families are keeping safe it has been a very difficult phase for all of us and hope that we all will come out of this situation much stronger in this call i'll try to run you through the steps that Newgen has taken to overcome the current situation the new ways of our working the impact on our business and opportunities as we see first we have always believed that newgen as a family is one of our core values given these unprecedented times well-being of our employees and their family is of utmost importance to us the company's foresight quick decision making business continuity processes and robust it infrastructure ensured seamless transition to the remote working environment in a span of a days we proactively set up a covid action team which constantly assessed and responded according to the crisis there was just in time requisition of laptops enabling of vpns ensuring information security and coordination between teams we are happy to say that over 90% of our workforce is now enabled to work remotely in these difficult times we have seen some extraordinary dedication shown by employees and would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our employees for the same we have about 560 active customer across 69 countries our solutions are of mission critical nature for our long term customers this serve as the backbone of their operations during this covid time we ensured we fully supported our customers so that they can ensure business continuity we have been receiving appreciation from customers across the board for this extraordinary support extended by the company in these difficult times now coming to the annual results we closed the revenue of rupees 661 crore 
for the year up only 6% compared to last year which was lower than much lower than our expected we witnessed growth across most geographies emea region grew by 17% apac at 10% us at 5% and us growth is primarily based on saas wins and hence growth looks small but will result in long term sustained revenue india however continued to face challenges and was slow in the entire second half and also in the fourth quarter due to economic sluggishness in nbfcs and banking we also suffered due to consolidation in banks as you know many banks are consolidating and many of our new propositions went out of the window as you are aware our business has heavy dependence on fourth quarter the last quarter was further impacted by new business deferment due to restriction imposed globally starting in february 2020 leading to international evacuation operations and subsequent lockdown government business also completely subsided overall we still did 71 logo acquisitions during the year profit and margins were impacted during the year on account of slower growth in top line and continued investment in r&d sales and marketing efforts the company reported a ebitda of rupees 105 crore and profit after tax of rupees 70 crore however our annuity revenue continued to remain strong and comprised of 56% of the revenue and witnessed the growth of 22% yov by of these cloud revenue continued to grow rapidly at 60% of yoy most geographies are increasingly showing acceptance towards cloud solution we successfully moved clients in saas to saas in apac and one new customer there as well saas solutions are easy to de- deploy remotely and this is expected to give us substantial advantage in covid year during the year newgen has been again positioned by challenger and gartner magic quadrant for content services it has also been positioned as a strong performer in the forester wave ecm content platform newgen make continuous investment in r&d and has strong team of 400 plus employees which constantly focus on various research and product development initiative initiatives during the year it was granted four patents taking the total patents of to 15 granted as of march 2020 we have recently received approval of setting up a unit in the it its fcz in noida up for development from development commissioner of noida special economic zones we continue to extend our reach globally with our direct and indirect sales network now we are also focusing and strengthening si ecosystem fast sales to si in fortune 2000 customer in us is thriving and we are seeing good traction in this while in short term the environmental challenges are expected to continue to lead delays in new deal signing and lengthen the sales cycle we believe that today the relevance and requirement of our digital transformation solutions for enterprise is more than ever all our customers are realizing this during work from home situation and planning to go for more of these solutions implemented 
these solutions are natural fit for our strategy of remote implementation. We are thus reinventing new ways of working by aggressively pursuing cloud deployments across the globe. Moving forward, we expect that this would yield good results. We are structuring our team in the right way. We have been successfully executing each stage of the project, from requirement gathering to project planning to implementing and production support remotely. The company has been transforming new methods of sales and marketing also, including remote engagement and increasing localization effort. Company's new version of product, IBPS, has low code capability and includes cloud deployment that are very relevant today. Union has launched an enhanced version of customer communication management suite and enables users to easily create, design, and manage HTML, email, and other messaging communications. Newgen is developing and deploying new solutions under Paycheck Protection Program of USA to help financial institutions quickly process loans under the various monetary and fiscal interventions introduced by government globally to stabilize economic conditions. Uh, within a span of a couple of days of announcement of SBA's that is a US government SBA PP scheme by US government. Our team defined and conceptualized the solution, designed and built it, deployed the same on our cloud, uh, Amazon Cloud. We are receiving good traction of our new solution, which has now been deployed by 20 plus banks and financial institutions in US till date. We are now working on the forgiveness piece for the same. The company is prioritizing SaaS-based delivery model for the solution. We are making concerted efforts towards more efficient operations and cost optimization for cash preservation to help us maintain a healthy liquidity position during this phase. Our R&D expenditure during the year was 9.45% of revenue and sales and marketing efforts at 21% of revenue, keeping our long-term plans in mind. Our net cash from operating activity was at 90 crores during the year. Our net trade receivables as on March 31st, 2020 are 269 crores, which resulted in stable net DSO of 149 days. Q4 results. Our revenue at Q4 is rupees 191 crore. During the quarter, EBITDA was rupees 52 crores and profit after tax is 42 crores. We have 21 new deals during the quarter. And it includes large projects with leading pan-African financial institutions offering bank services to 20 African countries, license agreement with key government ministry in India, Four cloud agreements in US, including a deal with leading provider of property casualty insurance for auto, home, and business. Mid-sized project with one of the largest Bahamian bank. We also required to strengthen our board. We have found we have appointed Ms. Padmaja Krishna as non-executive independent director of the company during the quarter. In the end, I would like to reassure that Newgen has a resilient business model in place with large annuity revenue streams, recurring business from existing customers, as well as diversification across verticals clients and geographies. We are also working on cost optimization measures in the short term to conserve crash. We are carefully monitoring the situation and taking all necessary precautions 
for employees, customers, partners, and vendors. We are also actively pursuing new opportunities while working around new ways of working to ensure that Newgen emerges strong from this situation. We are now open for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who is just to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <laughs> The first question is from the line of Ravi Sundaram from Family Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, hope you're all do, doing safe uh, and uh, congrats on the excellent set of quarters, uh, excellent set of results. Sir, I just had one question. The question was, yes, we had some deferment of business in Q4. And uh, does this deferment mean, uh, I know Q4 is a heavy quarter for us. Uh, some of this would uh, flow in our subsequent quarters, or uh, how should we look at this? Sir? Uh, thanks, Ravi. This is uh, Jeet from Newgen. Uh, so we have uh, we had almost a set of at least 10 to 15 deals, which were almost confirmed deals, which really got pushed out. Now, what has happened out of these push out? Surely some of these deals uh, are going to fall through in Q1 and Q2, and we are assessing that. But there is also an element of some of these deals which may not fall through in the near term visibility because as the customers also rearrange their priority. So for the larger institutions we are thinking for the banks where we have worked on a strategy, they may still recur us to most of these deals over may say in next one year's time. But whether they fall in Q1 or Q2, that's the time. We think that roughly 60% of these will still get closed in next two quarters. Uh, but others may just get delayed for a slightly longer time. Okay. So I think Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just wanted to, does that answer your question? Okay, yep, uh, that does. And uh, I think uh, we had also mentioned in our uh, previous calls that uh, though we have a heavy Q4 uh, typic, uh, historically, we are slowly trying to move towards uh, balancing it out uh, by bringing some of the business in the other quarters as well. Uh, are we progressing towards that? Uh, and uh, do we have some visibility in terms of two, three years of timeline or something like that, sir? Yeah, so I think you know, there are two, three ways of happening it. So as one of this is in very organic or what we are pushing through cloud. So as the NET business starts becoming larger part of the business share, share, you know, share the seasonality subsides. And in fact, in our last uh, couple of years, that has happened. We have now reached an NET business from uh, roughly around 40% to 56% over the last three, four years. And this is growing substantially year on year. So with more cloud push, and uh, in a larger business size, we do, do think that over a period of time, the seasonality will decrease. So far, we are not pushing cloud across all territories very aggressively because we are timing it with the, the market acceptance of that solution. But now with this COVID, I think there's a complete new way where customers are being more receptive about cloud, mm -hmm. as well as it becomes a more viable way of conducting business, doing business, as well as implementing solutions. So we do think it may accelerate. But it will take still some more time, so we have a large amount of revenue coming as licensing deals, as new, which, which introduces the lock So it's a, it's a work in progress. So it may take three, four more years to really smooth it out completely on quarter to quarter. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. That answers my question. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Vikas Mani from Natural Natural Research. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, congratulations uh, for the good quarter. So, uh, my question is related to the billing rates. Uh, do we have any impact on the billing rate due to this COVID-19 situation? First, or are we uh, trying to do this to uh, give the more transition from the volume side? Yeah, so because uh, if I understand your question, your question is about does it have an impact on billing rate? That's yes. 
so you know our billing rates predominantly are determined in different lines of our revenue streams so we have revenue streams predominantly which is licensed which is always negotiated and in difficult times you can have customers negotiating harder you have ATSs and AMCs and cloud which are pre-contracted where there is very little negotiation because that's a, that's a regular business but customers can still talk, talk about but out there the negotiation chances are very minor and then there are resource based contracts in our resource based contracts still see, we are not a company which really provides very large teams that has got very large uh, horizon contracts we still have short teams tactical teams on tactical contracts so we are able to retain our uh, our pushes to able to retain our uh, billing rate and in terms of optimizing in terms of getting more efficiency to the customer for the same billing rate because we, we are not we, our business is not really getting touched by the rate at which i am able to build our resources because there is a answer question so the line for the current participant drop oh okay the next question is from the line of rudesh chandvi from discovery capital you go ahead uh, hi sir just a couple of questions in terms of is there any kind of guidance i know it's difficult right now is there any guidance sort of providing with regards to uh, this kind of current year fy21 is it, you know we don't provide guidance the issue is uh, we have a this is an unprecedented situation in terms of uh, you know looking at exactly how the business scenario will unfold is very difficult but broadly as as mr nigam has addressed as the we have a large part of our business is completely diversified we have completely diversified across geos across segments of businesses and across customers with very little client concentration and you know our contract deal sizes uh, with clients are not of really huge magnitude they are still more tactical and we do very very critical things for customers our customers run their it's the bank the bank is running its core businesses it's lending on its platform it's opening accounts on this platform similarly if an insurance company is issuing so we don't see you know uh, any big challenge in our continued business which is the annuity businesses or the renewal of ats and as it is all the books uh you know our support contract our cloud contract we do see our impact on the new deal wins which is whether it's new deals in existing clients or new deals in new clients so our ability to determine the next year's growth will be determined on how how much the market opens faster and how fast customers are able to pursue the new orders so we do see that you know there is still an upside for us because this environment has also thrown up slightly accelerated the pace of certain decision making in certain customers as as the next quarter unfolds and next quarter unfolds and market opens we should be able to have more better estimates about how our top line will unfold and how our cost will record it and uh, the, the entire product which is helping and assisting in the ppp in america which we're seeing has been adopted by about 20 clients or so is that uh, a reasonable amount of actually increase in the revenue or or so i think what, what that is specifically that is more about our ability to be relevant in the market in the most difficult time so what we did is out there we rapidly using our product deployed a new solution in a matter of days made sure that we have around a series of new customers who could come to the solution our initial pricing was determined to basically the, uh, make sure that they don't have any barriers of entry because it was supporting the customer but with each, each of those customers we are assuming that we can build a you know a million dollar multi million dollar pipeline of business over next few years because some of them are very substantial customers so it may not have direct revenue relevance in one or two quarters but surely adds up to the whole pie or or more quarters Got it. And and just on the expenses side of things, you had you had uh, you had indicated some kind of cost cutting initiatives. Is there anything you can highlight with regards to the actual steps being taken and how large we expect that to be in terms of impact on our expenses? So I think again, expenses in work in progress. We have already taken some measures, and some measures are organic because of I think there's a substantial part of our expense which is international travel. I think we see I uh, see a very strong reduction this year because of and because it's not a good reduction, but we have no choice. We can't travel. And the second part is about you know rationalization of certain in terms of performance pays and other things which we have taken up for some quarters. 
so i think we are we are uh, till for this year we are not aggressively reinvesting in sales and marketing and growth of so we are looking at more conservative numbers and thus i think we should be able to plan our expenses much better this year and get get much better margins got it and the, the last question is on the india uh, uh, revenue piece of thing so obviously with the kind of consolidation of financial institutions etc you had indicated things are going slightly slow do you see that being an area which remains it's like a flattish or you expect it actually could be go to, to happen in that or or I mean, how should we be thinking about the india experience of course see i think we always look at india market very positively i think at the beginning of year we have enough cases i think the only thing is over because there is so much uncertainty and sudden jerks in this market it really disappoints you in the middle of the year i think the last year i think if you look at there be three major damages to indian market from our perspective the nbfc issue which was typically a growth driver because we used to sell to almost any dealer in nbfc and as you say nbfc is a big customer uh banking consolidation which not only spoiled our cases in the banks which got consolidated but also deferred out cases in the banks which became the principal banks as well as government uh, slow movement in government cases the decision making completely got pushed out uh, i think again uh, as i said last last year also in the last quarter we have created phenomenally good cases in big trade finance cases in our chu banks as well as in private banks we have extremely good cases in governments in different ministries going on the issue is about if the government is going to be slightly more aggressive in spending we should be able to still grow india so i think we are not ruled out india but no. as as you are saying the other other areas of the market in terms of international is growing so india as a percentage of revenue may not be able to keep pace with the international growth got it got it. and the last question which is with regards to your hedging policy how much of your revenues and for how long are hedged and are there some kind of currency benefits we accept to keep to in terms of your offshore business we since you know we don't hedge generally we have a packing credit which is against the export receivable mm-hmm. we rotate that against that and that provides a natural hedge because we yeah. also you know expenses on that beyond that we don't do any hedging so it's roughly around if i'm if i'm right the number maybe around 10 crore around 70 80 crore which we rotate yeah yeah, yeah. that so it's a natural hedge yeah got it got it i understand so we are seeing a small amount of impact of kind of currency uh in in the q4 and we can potentially feel a larger amount q1 on yeah so so i couldn't get the question no i was asking is that we are given tpp actually a depreciation of the rupee we've seen some impact of that happening in q4 but we'll see a larger impact happening at q1 onwards in terms of the benefits of the rupee depreciation i i don't think uh, because q4 i think the currency movement uh, towards the end of the month towards march was slightly higher on a, maybe maybe on a, uh you know at the, towards the end it was higher than what is predicted in the q1 so it depends right. on entirely how the currency moves at then but i think you should also understand for us it does not matter much because it balances from the the interest cost on the packing credit so okay. initially we try to maintain neutral currency there understood okay thanks that's all thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one now the next question is from the line of shiv agarwal from an individual investor please go ahead yeah hello sir uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity uh, i am just trying to understand uh, if the quality of delivery to customers has been hurt due to remote working i mean what has been the feedback from your customers so far i think this is one thing we have been done in fact extremely good so far i think our quality of delivery to any customer has not hurt because uh, we are managing very critical installations for them i think also you know we are already as a company who is servicing customers of more than 60 countries around 600 560 major, major critical installations of course we are not present at every place our people are not at the customer side so there is a kind of a remote working prevailed in the model only what has happened right now that has been completely fully unleashed in terms of the remote working 
So we have uh, made sure all our customers, their systems are up and running, all their critical milestones, releases that are gone. In fact, uh, for one of our uh, global uh, shared service uh, manufacturing clients, we have gone with a global rollout of processes in the month of April. At the end of peak COVID, we had a global rollout of uh, process of more than 60 countries uh, being used. I don't think our delivery is what has what has hurt is ability to get into new deals because the decision making out there is more critical, it's more collaborative as well as people have to feel comfortable about investing in an area. That is the impact we see. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, sir, one more thing. Uh, given that your platform is very neutral and it's possible to build a lot of solutions on the on top of this. So have you received a lot of inquiries from your existing customers from the so in the sense of whether have you been able to cross sell? So some banking client comes in and says that you are already handling this sub process. Now why don't you do another adjacent process or maybe even the legal department can you automate, maybe digitize the document and so I on. So have you been receiving those kind of inquiries? I think always that's been one of our growth drivers to keep on cross selling, up selling to the customer. And I think if you look at it at this time, Mr. Lingam also gave you an idea. In last uh, uh, three months now, not not less than just two months, we have uh, done work for uh, SBA, which is PPE lending. We have done work for forgiveness. We have done for work for enrollment of students for a county. We have worked on CPLS, which is a UK lending. We are working on the Australian scheme. For India, SME and Agri, we have come up with accelerators, which are being pushed in the market. Which are, and all these are for both existing and new customers. So right now, financial service industry is showing more, you know, they're becoming more active. Rest are just still recovering from shock. So, okay. And wherever, wherever the industry is moving, we are able to find more and more relevance out there. I'm sure as, as the market opens up, we'll find, uh, you know, more traction in business because of these initiatives. So the way you have built products for the banking industry on using your platform, so are you looking at building similar kind of products for other industries like healthcare, for example, or SMC? I mean, they are relatively think, uh, recession resistant. So that might help. So uh, it's very difficult to understand a new industry uh, in the time of crisis. Okay. I think we are, we have already five different industries. We do government is another big area for us. Insurance is another area for us. We then work on manufacturing and global shared services as one uh, important area. Similarly, as pharma insurance, as health insurance, we are committed. Where we have expertise. So the initial success is around working more on those areas. And then as, as in a better times, we can invest into newer areas and newer verticals. And just one more thing, sir. Uh, regarding these, the, the PPP and uh, the one in UK is also Australia. You, you mentioned that you have signed up some 20 odd customers. So how many of them are new and how many of them are your existing? Uh, I mean, to yeah. your deployed so, so, so far, the customer wins are only in US. We have not got any customer wins so far in Australia or UK. Okay. Anyway, these are very small subsidies yet. And if I'm right, out of the US, out of 20, more than 50% or 60% are new customers. Okay, so then it gives you a lot of uh, growth opportunity with that. Fine. But you can check, right. check with the T right with the T, she can give you an exact number. Yeah, because yeah. These, that's I what think the substantial, substantial yeah. is new customers. Yeah, the right. strategy was to acquire them to cloud through this opportunity and then show them the power of platform and then do the regular. Uh, digital account opening, loans, CV, you know, many more processes with that. Right, right. Thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah. Thank you. We would request the participants to please press star and one to ask a question. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Rahul Bohri from Exponential Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, opportunity. So I just want to understand, uh, you know, the the EBITDA or the PAT this year has uh, obviously uh, gone down significantly. And and I believe, you know, uh, one of the key reasons is the impact of COVID mm-hmm. in the last quarter. Mm-hmm. 
but as you look back you know even quarter on quarter mm-hmm. with the last three four quarters the numbers have been lagging the previous financial year so is it is it the nbfc and banking uh, you know so to say uh, challenges that that sector is facing is that the single biggest reason how do you look at the bridge of you know the let's say uh, you know the ebitda <clears throat> from last year which is about 20 25 odd crores uh how do you look at that uh, bridge and second question is more related to the days, days which is roughly about 149 days is that something uh, you know which is which is unique to our business given the large dependence on the bfsa segment uh, and and do you think that that can improve going forward yeah rahul thanks for the question uh on the on the you know so i think if you have been tracking this business this business has been always positioned around uh, around the 20% growth rate and we have been doing that for a x number of years now you know, at least uh, last eight nine years and so what has happened in the first three quarters because of the weakness in india we were already running in a slower rate or rather than 20% we were running at a growth rate of around 13 14% in the first nine months and at the you know at that level also so there was some amount of difference and our cost at at the beginning of the year when we are planning the cost for achieving 20% growth both in investment in r&d sales marketing as well as manpower for servicing that growth growth we are already at a cost of between 15 to 70% aware so anything which is below uh, above that as as to our uh, margins and anything below completely is of our margin because we can't do cost planning based on exactly on the business which we do in that year so there is some element of uh, slow down in the first three three quarters of the year because of the india impact but the biggest crisis if you look at our q4 business also the majority of that q4 also it lost sizing towards the last month and the last 15 days of march because that's what most of the license <laughs> get closed for us and if you look at also as the impact of that this year our license revenue has gone even lower than the last year's license revenue so any revenue addition would have directly added to our margin because that's how the numbers unfold anything beyond 15 16% of our cost gets completely added to the margin so all this uh, roughly around you know 20 30 40 crores of if you look at clip we are looking at actually the clip which was bigger than 20 crores because we are comparing it with the last year number our projected numbers for this year were slightly higher than that Right. so so much more so i am assuming that last 30 crores 35 crores of slip was all because of q4 but beyond that another 20 25 crores was a slow down in the whole year of india mm-hmm. and okay. on the second question of dso i think if you have been tracking this i think our dso has been a part of our business culture and it's also to do with licensed company sales globally if you track uh, international companies to sell a lot of licenses especially to new customers So we were in the around two two and a half years. We were at a DSO of more than two seventy days or something like that. So we have taken a target right. to get the average DSO to one twenty days. I think we have already right. reached that. On only the March number, still March quarter is slightly larger. So the DSO number is slightly larger at the end of the March. But during if you look at an average during the year, it has gone around under twenty days, which was our target. It will keep on reducing because as the MUT and subscription businesses keep on increasing and become larger part of the revenue. This will further optimize, and I think you know over next maybe two three years we can take our next year of target to build it at less than hundred days. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Agarwal from Windy Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking my question. The so first question is regarding revenue from top clients. so if, as i can see the revenue from top 5 uh, clients and top 10 clients has decreased on year on basis uh, with around 4 to 5% is this because we lost a big client among top 5 clients during fy20 okay uh, sorry i think we, our presentation did not make it so basically what is when you are saying this is not the revenue from the same five clients so okay. last year we had got substantially three large deals from some clients okay. which created the concentration higher So every year, these top clients, five clients, or top ten clients also change for us, depending on who comes. So, so typically, our clients are the larger clients are in the range of around two million dollars of revenue, and they keep on switching. So we have not lost any client in those cases. But last year, we have got some major deals in US as well as in India, some three large deals which really made it slightly more 
lopsided towards the top five clients. Understood. Understood. And the second question is regarding the expenses. The second C in Q4 itself, there was some improvement around 5% in employee cost and around 10% in other expenses. Is this because of the COVID? And also, what is the magnitude of improvement that we can see from this number here? Yeah, so we have done some, I think some of because of the withdrawal of travel and other things, because there's a travel cost which gets cut because of that automatically. And some mm. was because already, you know, the year of the Q3 also was slightly slower on an implementation manpower, so we optimized something uh, around that number. Uh, there's also uh, amount of, uh, you know, manpower cost gets reduced because of the variable pay, because since we didn't meet our target, so the variable pay provisioning kicked in, which reduced the manpower cost. So that's where the impact has come in the last quarter, but it has been minor. And going mm -hmm. further, during, during the year, depending on how the business and the conditions unfold, we have already mm -hmm. defined a series of series of things, both on the manpower cost as well as travel and cost and other costs in LG and a and marketing. So we have put them on the radar, we are optimizing them. And depending on uh, as the market unfolds, we should be able to really project them there. But as I said, I think it's a, in, even uh, with the similar lines of revenue as we did this year, we should have better operating margins. We hope to do better than that, but I think mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, generate better, sh surely have some expansion of operating margins this year. Uh, would it be possible for you to at least quantify Q1, Q2 from <laughs> your? Uh, I think it's difficult because, you know, we don't really do forward projections and I think, you know, our business is also still very small and jerky, dependent on still licensing and new deal wins. So, but any more color that you can talk to Gupti, she can provide you as much information. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We would request the participants to please press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Infinity Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my question was more along the lines of what the previous two participants are asking. Uh, so on the cost structure side, how much of your costs would be fixed costs and how much would be variable costs? Uh, in the sense that a bunch of your revenue would also be linked to implementation and as new deal wins go down, uh, that part of the revenue may disappear and we may also be forced to cut costs there. How, when we look at your PNL, how do you break each of these down and uh, how would you impact, how would you think the margin would shape up uh, with the revenue being impacted? Yeah, so you're, you're right. We have a, we have an element of cost which is roughly around still 40-45%, uh, which is manpower driven in terms of support and beef. That is where, depending on the size of business and size of our implementation, we have the variabilization of cost. But a large portion of our costs, which are to do with the, you know our sales and marketing and R and D investments, are predetermined. So every year we do we do plan about both these heads very aggressively. This year, as Mr. Nigam has communicated, we are looking at really working on also conserving cash and not going very aggressive on that. So this year, for the first time, we are not planning for almost 20% both upfront in Q1. We will see how it unfolds and then plan. So there is going to be optimization in our sales and marketing costs in, in terms of our travel and expansion. There is going to be optimization of the manpower costs in terms of depending on degree of business we get, which is to be implemented. Those will be the major help. And there is going to be some amount of optimization, which is, which is induced because of the manpower into SD and other costs. We do think that, you know, between, between like on travel, there is a, there is a chance of optimizing the travel cost by around 30, 40 percent, depending on if the travel opens up only in Q3, Q4. So similarly on manpower front, depends on, uh, you know, uh, there is an element of optimization we can achieve by not hiring aggressively because we have, we do uh, do more than 15 percent iteration. This year iteration is going to be less. We also do hire more aggressively than that. So this year on the hiring side, if we go slow, there is going to be around 5-10% impact on the manpower cost just because of that. Understand. And your overall employee costs are about 40-45% of revenues. Uh, I'm assuming your sales and marketing costs and R&D costs are also in the nature of manpower costs because it will largely be people. And you should correct me if I'm wrong. So other than that, the variable employee cost, how much is really variable per se uh, was my question? 
I think variable employee cost is only in the implementation manpower, which is very small. So variable cost, if you're talking of employee cost, then beyond these heads, there is not much. But on the other variable costs, which are uh, in terms of uh, our, uh, which you call marketing, travel, and other things, those I already explained where they stand. In case so you, you, want, you want some more details, I think this you can, you can just write down your set of questions and she can provide you better numbers to get that understand. Sure, sure. Uh, I'll take that offline. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you so much for attending the call. For any other further queries, you can connect with us. Uh, either you can mail me or can go through the website. Thank you. Thanks. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Security, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line. Thanks. Thank you.